Hello everyone and welcome to video number 27 in our survival game series done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies and in this video we are gonna dig into Mechanim. Uh, so Mechanim was launched with Unity 4 and it's basically the animation system of Unity. So uh, Mechanim is, is really powerful and you can do a lot of of things with this but make sure you have your unity updated or else you won't be able to do these things so uh, we are gonna look at a pretty basic uh, mechanism setup and uh, and here we have the uh, a picture I just quickly threw together uh, which explains uh, kind of the setup we are gonna use uh, this is not the exact blend tree we are gonna be using but it's just uh, to show you how you could uh, set things together. So on our player, we have our main camera and under our main camera, we have our arms. On them, we have the animated component storing a controller. And that's really what we're going to focus on in this video. If you want to know how to set up these arms and import them correctly, uh, watch tutorial number 25, I believe. Uh, where we do just that. That's two videos ago. Um, but basically the controller, the mechanism controller, is what allows us to add animation and blend between them depending on variables which we can then declare in a script. And that's a really long sentence uh, and you might not understand this yet, but uh, I will expl explain a lot of things, so uh, don't worry about that. Okay, so this is basically how a uh, mechanism controller could look. And uh, it stores different animations. In here we have three different animations. We have standing, we have jump, and we have punch. So uh, if we just zoom in on this, we might be able to... Yeah. So we have the standing, we have the jump, and we have the punch. And from the different animations to the other, we have transitions. And these transitions uh, do several things. They store information about how we want to blend between animations. Uh, so how they should physically uh, move between and, uh, and how long of a fading time that should have and, and so on. Uh, but they also store information about when to, um, to transition. So for example, if we would determine whether or not we are running, uh, we would do this depending on a speed variable. Or if, uh, if we want to determine whether or not we're jumping, we would do it using a boolean, which is a true or false. Okay, so let's now actually dig into Unity and uh, apply this. So uh, here we have our arms, and if we go under our... Uh, and find them in our project pane there, we can see we have the animation set up. So they are working just fine. And now we want to apply them in game. Uh, last video we, uh, or the last video where we made animation, we covered uh, how to add the controller. So this is how our controller looks so far. And this is just basically one single state, which is the idle, using the idle motion or the idle animation clip. And it's playing with a speed of one. And the reason why this is orange is because, because it's the default clip it's going to play. So if we right click on it and hit the uh, make set as default, we can make this the default clip. So, uh, so that's really useful and that's usual the idle animation you want to be set as default. Uh, next up we have this and this is just included in any uh, controller in Mechanim uh, by default. This is called the any state. And this allows us to just blend into uh, animations no matter what state we're in. So normally you have uh, you make transitions from states to states, but this will allow us to blend into uh, an animation from any state. Meaning that if we would, for example, want to include an animation uh, where we die. So if the, our player dies, we want to be able to do that whether or not he's running or hitting something or idling, or whatever, we want to be able to go to the dying. And so we would have an animation set from the any state. 
Uh, it's really important though that you remember to make an if uh, on the transition so that it won't just die all the time. Okay, but that's not what we are going to focus on now. I'm getting ahead of myself, so uh, let's just really focus on this. So let's add in some more animation clips. And uh, the next one I want to make is uh, the weather, the idle animation. So we could go under our arms and then select our animation clip and just drag it in. So let's do that. So under our arms, expand that and then have the idle with a weapon. Uh, select, uh, select it and then just drag it in. And here we see it. So let's just move these over here so we can have a good view. So basically, uh, we want to uh, play the idle by default, but if we then equip the weapon, we want this to be playing. So let's just turn off the foot IK and let's make a transition. And you do this by right clicking from where you want to transition, hitting make transition and then clicking to where you want to transition. And uh, let's now hit, click on this transition. Uh, and so you can see we have quite a few things going on. This up here is not what, something we want to focus on, so we can just ignore that. We want to turn, turn off the atomic here. Then we want to set a condition. So the condition uh, is the if statement, basic, basically. So this was, will allow us to have a uh, mechanism check whether or not something is true before actually um, uh, transitioning. So let's make a new one. So let's make a plus. Well, actually, let's just change this one. By default, you have the uh, condition called exit time. And this allows you to just transition back whenever the animation is done playing. So if you want to just transition back when you have played it once, for example, in an attack animation, you can use the exit time. But uh, before we can make a condition, we want to add a parameter. And a parameter is basically a variable. So hit the pl uh, plus down under the parameters and then uh, select the boolean. We want to uh, call this weapon is on. And uh, or we could call it equipped. Let's just leave it at on so we don't have to type all that much. And now we can click bang back on the transition. Go under conditions, change it to weapon is on, and then true. So if we put on a weapon, it will transition to the idle with weapon. And this is a timeline. So here you can scrub through your animation and you will see it changing in your preview. So if we just expand on this just a bit, we can see it playing here whenever we change the slider. And so we can go in and zoom in here and use Alt to navigate around. And then we can go to this point where the idle with weapon starts and we can see that it's fading down here. So let's just hit play and see if this is, is fitting. I want that to be just a bit quicker, the closing of the hands. So what we can do is we can zoom it in even more. So now we can really see the transition and then we can take the end of the transition and just close that in. Or you could take the start and close that in, but we are just going to go with the end here. So bring in the end a bit. There we go. And if you want uh, this idle with weapons to start right at the transition, you can just drag it all the way to the right and it will snap back. Now let's hit play and the fingers close closes really fast. So hit play and that looks great. So that's how it will blend. And uh, when we're satisfied with that, I am now, uh, we can go ahead and make the transition back again to the idle. So hit on idle with, with weapon, then hit make transition and go back to the idle. Uh, and so now under the conditions, we want weapon is on to be false. And if we zoom in, we can adjust the transitioning here so let's hit play and that's really too slow again so let's just drag this in that's a bit too fast this is really a matter of preference that's really great so uh you could have an animation uh that will 
actually pick up or switch the animation here uh, so so we could have him pick it up from the back or uh, from the ground but for now we are going to go with the simplest so just have it um, open and close and then the uh, weapon will later just spawn in on his hand but that's something we are going to cover again the inventory system is on its way okay great so next uh, next up let's create uh, just a state for running uh, so under the parameters here we can have the uh, speed variable uh, and for now let's just set it to something like three so under here the parameters hit the plus sign make this a float change this to speed and let's just have that a default at uh, zero actually let's just start out by having this a boolean so we can quickly test it out so make that a boolean instead call it speed and uh, now we can just uh, or is running let's call it that so is running uh, and now we can just have a state with the running uh, so now we can just quickly test it out and then later in the script we will have it be a, a float so that we can uh, determine the speed inside of mechanism. If you didn't get that, that's all right. Uh, but let's drag in the run animation onto mechanism and hit the foot IK, turn that off. And uh, the run animation is basically something we want to be able to shift to uh, from both the idle and the idle with, with weapon. Uh, we don't want it in the any state because we don't want to switch to run while uh, while hitting uh, something. Um, you could do that, do that. some uh, games do that, but I don't want this game to do that. Uh, so now let's hit the idle, hit the make transition, and then click on run. Now select the transition, and the condition should be changed to is running, and that should be true. And now let's go down to where it fades. Zoom in on this try to hit play and that actually looks pretty good yeah I'm satisfied with that um, we could make it just a bit slower yeah I like that uh, and now let's make the transition back again so run make transition then idle and let's again set the condition to is running equals false and let's zoom in on the transitioning, hit play. And that looks great already, I think. Sweet. Now let's do the same with idle with weapon. So make transition and then click on run. The condition should be is running equals true. Let's have a look at how it behaves. So hit play. That's pretty great. A little bit of sudden movement, maybe. We could have this extended just a bit. That's really great. That was maybe a bit too much. That's perfect. And now let's make the transition back again. And, um, and let's set this to is running equals false. And let's see if this works. That looks great. Yeah. Okay, so um, you might think that this would work, though we have one problem with the setup we have now. And that is if we take a look at our transitioning back from the run. So the two back transitions here to the idle and to the idle with, with weapon, they have the exact same conditions. And so this would make run confused whether or not it should transition to the idle or the idle with weapon if it's no longer running. So on this we want to add another condition. So from the run to the idle select the transition hit plus and then say weapon is on equals false. So we want to transition back to the idle if the running is false and the weapon is on is false. Then select the other transition from the run to the idle with weapon add another condition, weapon is on, should be true. So if it's not running, but it has the uh, weapon equipped, it should transition back to the idle with, with weapon. Let's see if this is working. So we could drag down our animator to our project pane, maybe drag it up a bit. So this is how it looks. Let's select the game and hit play. 
Remember that whenever we don't see something animating down here, all we have to do is select our arms and then hit the apply root mo motion. You really just have to turn this on and off. It's a bug with Unity and something I haven't found out how to solve yet. But let's hit the play now and we can see it animating. We can see the little progress bar down here. And now you can go down to the mechanism wind window and we can hit the weapon is on. And now it changes and it loops perfectly. Now we could change to is running. So we see the arms running. If we then unequip our weapon while we are running, so change the weapon is on to false and then turn off the is running. It goes back to the idle animation. And so we can play around with these things to see how they transition back and forth. And this looks overall really fluent and uh, it's a great setup so far. Uh, so that's it for this part of this video. Um, I am sorry I have to split it up, but else I would go uh, just ramble along for too long, I think. Uh, but in the next one, we are going to set up hitting. Uh, so we are going to get in our animation clips uh, with the uh, swing animations and the punch animations. And that's going to be really awesome. After that, we'll take a look at inventory systems, weapon switching, and so on and so forth. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.